What if I told you that one of the most powerful and influential banks in the world was founded by a man who never finished school, who started his career as a fruit vendor, who defied the conventions and prejudices of his time, who risked his life and fortune to help others, who faced countless enemies and obstacles, who never gave up on his vision and values, and who changed the course of history? Would you believe me? Well, you should. Because this is the true story of Bank of America and its founder, Amadeo Pietro Giannini. Our story begins in 1870 in San Jose, California. There, a baby boy was born to a poor family of Italian immigrants. His name was Amadeo Pietro Giannini. His father had come to America from a small town in Italy called Favale di Malvaro, hoping to strike it rich in the California gold rush. His mother had married his father after her first husband died, leaving her with two children and pregnant with a third. Amadeo had a sister named Rose, who was born before him. He was the first son of Luigi Gianni and Virginia De Martini. Amadeo grew up in San Francisco, a bustling and booming city that attracted people from all over the world. He was a bright and curious boy, but he hated school. He preferred to work with his stepfather, who owned a fruit cart in San Francisco. He learned how to speak English and several other languages. He learned how to bargain and haggle. He learned how to spot opportunities and trends. He learned how to save and invest. He had a natural talent for business and a strong work ethic. By the time he was 31, he had sold his interest in his wholesale produce business and brokerage firm for $150,000 and retired from active business. He inherited and managed his father-in-law's estate, which included banking interests. He became a director of the Columbus Savings and Loan Society in 1902, a small bank that served the Italian-American community in San Francisco. But he soon realized that he was not cut out for retirement. He had a restless and ambitious spirit. He had a vision and a mission. He wanted to create a bank that would serve not just the Italian Americans, but all the working class people who were ignored and neglected by the traditional banks. He wanted to create a bank that would lend money based on character and potential, not on collateral or status. He wanted to create a bank that would open branches in every neighborhood and offer convenient hours and services. He wanted to create a bank that would be for everyone. He proposed his ideas to his fellow directors at the Columbus Savings and Loan Society, but they laughed at him. They thought he was crazy and reckless. They told him that his ideas would ruin the bank and drive away the customers. They told him that he should stick to his role as a director and leave the banking business to the experts. Gianni was not deterred by the rejection. He decided to quit his position at the Columbus Savings and Loan Society and start his own bank. In 1904, he founded the Bank of Italy with nine partners. He rented a space in a converted saloon near the waterfront where he set up his first branch. He hired staff who could speak different languages and relate to different cultures. He offered loans for various purposes, such as buying a home, starting a business, or sending children to school. He also offered checking accounts, savings accounts, traveler's checks, money orders, and other services that were unheard of at the time. He promoted his bank with newspaper ads and flyers that appealed to the masses. He hired salesmen who could speak different languages and relate to different cultures. They visited potential customers in their homes or workplaces and persuaded them to trust him with their money. He also cultivated relationships with local merchants, farmers, and community leaders who could vouch for his integrity and vision. His strategy worked wonders. His bank grew rapidly in size and popularity. By 1906, he had opened six more branches in San Francisco and had over 8,000 depositors. His bank also survived one of the worst disasters in American history, the San Francisco earthquake and fire of 1906. The earthquake struck on April 18th at 5.12 a.m. It lasted for about a minute and caused massive damage to buildings, roads, bridges, water pipes, gas lines, and electric wires. It also triggered a series of fires that burned for three days and destroyed over 80% of the city. Gianni's bank was among the buildings that were destroyed by the fire, but he did not give up hope. He gathered two of his employees and managed to salvage $2 million in gold coins from the bank's vault before it was engulfed by flames. 
he hid the money in a garbage wagon and drove it through the chaotic streets until he reached a safe place outside the city. He set up a makeshift bank on a wharf near San Francisco Bay. He used a plank of wood as his desk and an orange crate as his chair. He hung a sign that read Bank of Italy on his wagon. He then began lending money to anyone who needed it to rebuild their homes or businesses. He did not ask for any collateral or paperwork. He only asked for the names and addresses. He trusted them to repay him when they could. He also helped distribute food, water, blankets, clothing and other supplies to the survivors of the disaster. He also donated $25,000 of his own money to the relief fund. He became a hero and a legend in the eyes of the people of San Francisco. His bank also emerged stronger than ever from the crisis. He was able to collect most of the loans he had made, as his customers were grateful and loyal to him. He also gained thousands of new customers who were impressed by his generosity and courage. He opened more branches in the city and expanded his operations to other parts of California. He also faced new challenges and opportunities. In 1928, he merged his bank with another bank called the Bank of America in Los Angeles. He became the president and majority shareholder of the new entity, which retained the name Bank of Italy. He also acquired several other banks and financial companies in the following years, creating a network of over 400 branches across the state. He also pioneered new innovations and services that revolutionized banking. He introduced branch banking, which allowed customers to access their accounts and conduct transactions at any branch of the bank. He also introduced consumer banking, which offered loans and credit cards to individuals for personal use. He also introduced mass marketing, which used radio, newspapers, billboards and other media to promote his bank and its products. He also had a vision of creating a nationwide bank that could serve customers across the country. He realized that this would require a change in the federal laws that restricted interstate banking. He created Transamerica Corporation in 1928, a holding company that controlled his banking interests and allowed him to bypass the federal laws that limited interstate banking. He also acquired banks in foreign countries that had branches in the U.S. He also established trust companies that offered banking services without being subject to banking laws. He faced fierce opposition from his rivals and critics, who feared his growing power and influence. They accused him of being a monopolist, a socialist, a fascist, or a traitor. They tried to block his expansion plans through legal battles, political pressure, and public smear campaigns. They also tried to undermine his reputation and credibility through rumors, scandals, and personal attacks. Giannini, undeterred by these challenges, fearlessly defended his bank and its visionary ideals. With unwavering passion and conviction, he vehemently argued that the Bank of America was not a threat, but rather a tremendous asset to the American people and the economy at large. He adamantly maintained that his bank was not a monopoly, but a true democracy boasting millions of shareholders who actively participated in its management. Furthermore, he staunchly asserted that his bank was a champion of capitalism, actively promoting free enterprise and fostering healthy competition. Above all, Giannini emphatically insisted that his bank was not a traitor, but a proud patriot, consistently supporting and upholding core American values and interests. Fueled by an unrelenting drive, Giannini embarked on an exciting new phase of expansion and innovation that would continue until his passing in 1949. He embarked on a strategic acquisition spree, procuring additional banks and financial institutions, both domestically and internationally, thereby expanding the reach and presence of his bank. Recognizing the evolving needs and preferences of his customers, Giannini introduced a range of new products and services, meticulously tailored to cater to their ever-changing demands. Simultaneously, he astutely invested in cutting-edge technologies and systems that not only bolstered the efficiency of his bank, but also fortified its security measures, safeguarding the interests of its clientele. He also supported various causes and projects that benefited society and humanity. He financed the construction of the Golden Gate Bridge, which connected San Francisco with Marin County and became a symbol of engineering marvel and beauty. He financed the production of several Hollywood movies, including Gone with the Wind and Snow White and Seven Dwarfs, which became classics of American cinema and culture. He financed the purchase of 100 Douglas DC-3s by Transworld Airlines, TWA, 
which helped the airline compete with United Airlines and revolutionized air travel and transportation. He financed the research of Albert Sabin, who developed an oral polio vaccine that was cheaper and easier to administer than Jonas Salk's injectable vaccine and saved millions of lives. He also helped America during its times of crisis and challenge. He helped America during the Great Depression, when he kept his bank open and solvent while many other banks failed or closed. He helped America during World War II, when he provided loans and credits to the government and the military to fund the war effort. He helped America after World War II, when he supported the reconstruction of Europe and Japan through the Marshall Plan and other initiatives. But he also faced some setbacks and controversies during this period. He faced a major lawsuit from the federal government, which accused him of violating antitrust laws and sought to break up his bank. He faced a bitter feud with his son-in-law, who tried to oust him from his bank and take over his empire. He faced a series of health problems, including a heart attack, a stroke and a coma. He overcame these challenges with courage and resilience. He died in 1949 at the age of 79. He left behind a legacy that is still alive today. His bank is still one of the largest and most influential banks in the world. His vision is still inspiring millions of people to pursue their dreams and goals. His story is still captivating millions of people who want to learn from his achievements and challenges. But his story does not end here. His bank continued to grow and evolve after his proud its history. His bank achieved remarkable milestones and set new records, cementing its place in the financial industry. Let's delve into some of these significant moments. In 1958, a groundbreaking event took place when his bank introduced the first ever general purpose credit card in history. This revolutionary card, initially known as Bank AmeriCard, later evolved into the globally recognized brand we now call Visa. Fast forward to 1970 and his bank accomplished another impressive feat by becoming the first American company to exceed $100 billion in assets. This remarkable milestone solidified their position as a financial powerhouse. Building on the spirit of innovation, in 1975, his bank installed its first automated teller machine, ATM. This technological marvel enabled customers to withdraw cash conveniently, without the need for human assistance. Embracing the digital age, in 1983, his bank unveiled its online banking service, a pioneering move that allowed customers to effortlessly access their accounts and conduct transactions via the Internet. Continuing their trajectory of expansion, in 1998, his bank merged with Nations Bank, a prominent North Carolina-based bank. This strategic union gave rise to the new Bank of America Corporation, boasting an extensive network of over 4,000 branches across 22 states and multiple foreign territories. Further solidifying their influence in the financial landscape, his bank made a significant acquisition in 2006. They acquired MBNA, a leading global credit card issuer, propelling his bank to become the largest credit card issuer in the United States. Amidst a changing financial landscape, his bank made a pivotal move in 2008 by acquiring Countrywide Financial, one of the largest mortgage lenders in the United States. This acquisition positioned his bank as the country's top mortgage servicer and originator, significantly shaping the mortgage industry. Demonstrating their commitment to diversification and strengthening their position in the investment market, his bank made a monumental acquisition in 2009. They acquired Merrill Lynch, a renowned investment bank and brokerage firm, thereby solidifying their position as the largest wealth management company globally. Continuing its journey of transformation, the Bank of America underwent further restructuring to optimize its operations and strategies. With a keen focus on efficiency, the bank diligently reduced expenses, fortified its capital and bolstered its risk management practices. In pursuit of its refined vision, the bank divested itself of non-core assets and businesses, including notable entities such as China Construction Bank, MBNA Canada, BlackRock and others. Concurrently, the bank embarked on an ambitious expansion into new territories, venturing into Canada, Europe, Asia-Pacific, Latin America and the Middle East. The establishment of enduring foundations and trusts ensured the continuity of the philanthropic endeavors. Furthermore, the bank dedicated itself to environmental, social and governance goals. 
exemplified through initiatives aimed at reducing its carbon footprint, promoting diversity and inclusion, and advancing economic opportunities for all. In the battle against COVID-19, the bank partnered with local health authorities and community organizations to support vaccination efforts. Employees' well-being, the bank raised its minimum wage to $25 per hour by 2025, while also providing special bonuses and benefits to its frontline workers. Enhancements were made to employee wellness programs, ensuring comprehensive support for the physical, mental, and financial health. The significant milestones and strategic decisions indelibly shaped the evolution of the Bank of America, positioning it as a leading force in the global financial industry. Today, the bank remains vibrant and dynamic, retaining its position as one of the largest and most influential financial institutions worldwide, boasting an impressive customer base of over 66 million and assets totaling more than $2.8 trillion. The Bank of America operates across 35 countries, employing over 200,000 dedicated professionals. With a comprehensive suite of financial products and services spanning banking, investing, lending, trading, wealth management, insurance, and more, the bank continues to drive innovation and shape the future. This is the captivating tale of Bank of America, a bank that blossomed into a global powerhouse. It's the chronicle of a financial institution that weathered earthquakes, wars, recessions, and scandals. It's the account of a bank that empowered millions of Americans to realize their dreams of owning a home, pursuing education, and embarking on entrepreneurial ventures. Most significantly, it's the narrative of a bank that revolutionized the landscape of banking forever. Additionally, this is the extraordinary story of its founder, Amadeo Pietro Giannini. It unravels the journey of a man who never completed his formal education, yet emerged as one of the most eminent bankers in history. Starting as a fruit vendor, he transcended his humble beginnings to become one of America's wealthiest individuals. Defying the conventions and prejudices of his time, he garnered unparalleled respect and admiration as a visionary leader on a global scale. In his pursuit of aiding others, he fearlessly risked his life and fortune eventually transforming into one of history's most magnanimous and compassionate philanthropists. Countless adversaries and obstacles were no match for his unwavering resilience and indomitable spirit, cementing his place as one of history's bravest fighters. Through unwavering commitment to his principles and unwavering dedication to his vision, he left an indelible mark as one of history's most ingenious and inspirational innovators.